So in this video, we're going to start to look at different properties of minerals that you can use to help identify them. And that's kind of where we're going to go at the end of this unit, being able to look at a mineral, take its properties, and then run it through a flow chart to help identify what it is. And in this one, we're going to go through three different ones. We're going to do color, streak color, and luster. So let's first look off, uh, look at the color uh, property. So we've got red minerals, green minerals. We've got uh, this dark yellow brown, all right, clear purple, all kinds of different colors. All right, and minerals can come in any color of the rainbow. Um, it's the first property that you can um, identify because again we're very visual. Uh, the problem with that is. Um, where I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 12 different samples up here, there's only really two minerals, okay? Uh, this here is a mineral quartz. And so, there's all of this stuff. And over here, this is the mineral called calcite. I've got two minerals here. And I use these two because they both uh, have many different forms that have different colors. Uh, this is citrine, this is tiger's eye, amethyst, rose quartz, right? um, and all these are just calcite. So how is that a mineral, which is supposed to have a specific chemical composition, which means again, it's made out of just you know, one thing, silicon and oxygen for quartz, calcium and a carbonate radical for, cal uh, for calcium. How is it that they have different colors? Well, it's something called a trace element. So you definitely wanna jot this down. Trace element is where every once in a great while, maybe every, you know, million or billion um, uh, molecules of SiO2, we could replace Say, for example, uh, with the citrine, we could replace uh, some of that silicon with maybe a titanium, all right? Or with amethyst, maybe a little bit of iron, all right? So those trace elements kind of sneak in there every once in a while, and it doesn't change the overall properties of the mineral, but it will change its outer color, all right? Uh, so color is normally not a really good thing to use to identify a mineral. Now, there are a few exceptions to all rules. Um, Sulfur, almost always this really bright yellow, right? which is one of those ways that you can quickly identify it. But for the most part, um, we don't want to use color too much um, to help identify things. Usually there's one predominant color uh, that uh, most of those minerals uh, samples will be, but it's usually one of the last things if you have to use it that you want to use. So that's color. All right, so the next thing we want to look at is something called streak color. Okay, streak color is, again, the color of the mineral, but it's the color of the mineral when it has been completely powdered. And I'm going to use calcite here as my example. Again, I've got clear uh, blue, green, yellow, orangey, and a red one. Well, if we took these and reduced them to a really fine powder, uh, what we would see is that they would all have the same color when they're powdered. And to do that, we need to um, basically use these kind of like sidewalk chalk. We're gonna get something called streak plates. Now, they're white ones and there are black ones. Right? They're made out of porcelain, which means they're pretty hard, just like tile, all right? Um, one thing about them, after a while, they can turn out to look like this, all right? If they look like this, uh, a little soap, a little water, uh, scrub them up and dry them off with a paper towel and get them nice and clean. If they're really dirty, you're not sure, uh, won't be sure what the color is when you streak them. So white and a black one, all right. Um, the white one's really good if the mineral streaks a darker color, uh, it'll stand out more. And the black one is really good if it streaks a lighter color. All right, you need that contrast. So, for example, let's just take this red one, all right? All right, you'd expect it to be red, but it's kind of hard to see what it is. All right, you can wipe it with your finger and see it's white, or if I just used black one, 
right? All of these, despite their outward color, streaked white. Um, white is by far the most common color, uh, so that may not be super helpful in identifying it, but that streak color is a consistent uh, example. Uh, so the powdered mineral form uh, is called the streak color. Now, that works really well when the minerals are uh, soft and can scratch on here, but sometimes you get weird minerals like this. This is pretty soft, but it doesn't like to, to powder on here. Same thing with these flaky minerals. These are both really flaky. And when you try to rub them on there, they don't want to uh, streak. So you don't have to necessarily rub the mineral on the streak plate. A little pro tip for the day is you can take something hard like this iron nail and rub it up against this and it will powder this mineral. And then you can wipe it on your finger and, and see what color it is. So if you can't get it to streak onto one of these, but you know it's really soft still, get something hard and scratch it and see what powder it is. And the last test that we're gonna look at in this VCast is we're gonna look at luster. Luster is just um, describing how a mineral reflects light. And there are two big groups that we're gonna use and we're gonna to stick to in this. We're gonna use metallic and non-metallic. Does it reflect light like a metal or does it reflect it like something that's not a metal? And an uh, example of metals, whether it be gold, copper, silver, um, you know, lead, right? any kind of metal like that. So a good example to start off with is this guy. Moving around in the light, you can see that it reflects like gold. So this is definitely a metallic one. All right, this is very silvery, also metallic. All right, pick up this guy. This does, doesn't even have a shine. All right, this is definitely a non-metallic. Um, you can go s some subdivisions that aren't important in this class, but this is almost like earthy dirt. Um, <clears throat> these two, all right, they are really shiny, but they shine like pieces of glass. And glass would definitely be a non-metallic, along with this guy. Um, some of the trickier ones are when you get things that are really dark gray or black. Um, you gotta really move it around, look for the shiniest parts of it that hopefully are freshly broken. And this guy uh, actually is shiny, kind of like uh, iron. Um, this one is also black, but it shines kind of like a piece of glass when you move it just right in the light. So it's actually non-metallic. <clears throat> now this guy is kind of weird. Look over here, kind of looks all rusty. But if you look for places that are freshly broken that aren't weathered like this one, almost looks kind of an in-between. But this is a very challenging one <clears throat> that is actually still metallic. So <clears throat> a quick way, and usually it's the first test you always want to do, is metallic, so it shines like a metal, right? or a non-metallic. And that's luster.